every single time we've ever had issues and it feels like things are falling apart, boom, right after, there's a little spurt, yeah. a little growth yep. that, that, that happens, right? Yep. And so you have to keep that perspective when you're going through shit. Like, I've got to grow through this. Uh, through this process, I have to address where I'm weak. I've got to be honest with myself. I've got to invest the time, the money, the effort, energy, whatever into this area so that it's no longer a headache for me. Right. And if you're not doing that, again, you're the issue. You're the problem. Real business, real business, real business. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like we don't care where you come from, yeah. where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is episode 134 with myself, mm -hmm. Trevor Cowley, as always, Kilo G. What's up? What's up, friends? Guys, today we have a, a topic of uh, something that we're that we're currently dealing with right mm -hmm. some of our topics are issues that we're currently facing or just got done facing and addressed and you know uh button things up and now we're moving on to greener pastures right mm -hmm. and so this is an issue that i think uh, every business will go through because you go through it multiple times right yeah. depending on the levels that you hit and basically a lot of the times business owners feel as though that things are falling apart because there's issues going on mm -hmm. with their business. Uh, if anything, if you're having issues in your business, it's probably because you're doing something right. You're growing, right? It's called growing pains for a reason. Mm -hmm. And we've dealt with this many times over, you know, whether it's your first million or the first 5 million, or then you hit 10 million, you're going to yeah. go through these phases where yeah. what you're currently doing, whether it's the number of staff that you have, the systems and processes that you have in play, whatever it is, isn't going to serve you at that right. next level. So when you start <laughs> plateauing at whatever level you're at and you're about to break through to another one, usually there's a big shit storm. Yeah. Right. And so as of probably the last two or three months, we've been growing pretty at a, at a pretty good pace. Uh, the issue that we had is, is we had the staff to service the clients that we currently had, but not necessarily forward thinking for, uh, for growth, right? right? And the idea is really to let you guys know, sometimes when it feels as though things are falling apart, they're actually more so falling together for right. you. It just doesn't feel like it when you're having to go through that process, Right. A hundred percent. I believe that there's two key things that you need to, to, to really have on point so that you don't hit those, those ceilings, um, where things do start feeling like they're falling apart, yeah. even though you're, you know, the growing pains and, uh, and, and you just got to learn and go through it, man. But at the end of the day, systems and processes, all right. And money, you know, you have to be able to pre-scale both. Yeah. If in like you either have one or the other, um, well, if if you're off, it's be probably because of one or the other, right? Yeah. Like we've we've done really well at always making sure we have the money to prescale. It's part of our huge our, our strategies. Yeah. The money has always been a huge part of our strategy. I mean, we're a company that revolves around money. We're an yeah. accounting firm, but uh, you know, and, and we've gotten better at systems and processes over the years. And sometimes we probably thought we were better than we were because I remember we had a lot of discussions too on like prescaling with with manpower, but we always kind of were like, well. You know, is it too early? Is are it, we are should we, we be hiring more yeah. sales guys right now, or should we hire more fulfillment? And, and instead of like just doing both, because it's hard. Like when you bring in a sales guy, right? First of all, or gal, all the other out. sales guys are like, "Well, you're taking leads off my 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 plate, man. Yeah. Like this is affecting how I'm eating." It's like, no, 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 man. We got more leads coming. We got this, whatever, blah blah blah. So you're so focused on that that you neglect kind of the fulfillment side, right? And then you're like, "Oh shit, you don't want to bring someone in uh, and and create a new fulfillment role, especially a key person role, because you're like." you know, is, is the key people there going to feel like, well, man, maybe you should have just gave me a raise or, you know what I mean? And you feel like that as an owner too. You're like, should I give them a raise because they say they can take on more. Yeah. Right. And you want to reward them because you're loyal to them. Right. But at the same time, mm -hmm. you have to be loyal to the business because the best thing you could do for that person is bring other people in so that they have a good work life balance so that they have an opportunity to continue to grow because if they're at their ceiling, and you're paying them everything you can, yeah. you know, then, then you're kind of taking away from them as well. They actually have more opportunity to grow if you don't 
bog them down with too much everything. Yeah. So now that they can actually lead and develop as a leader and maybe make a little bit more money at every step for the more people that they lead or, you know, there's, we get to go on and on and on about it. Right. Yeah. But those are some things that are just coming to my mind as we're, as we're bringing it up right now. I'm like, damn dude, like that's the struggle everybody goes through. Everybody's well, like, well, oh man, I didn't grow my sales team, but they're not thinking about their fulfillment or they're worried about their sales guys not having enough leads because they bring another person in the mix. And it's like, holy shit. Like, well, there's just, yeah, there's just a lot to worry about. And mm-hmm. what we've done is it seems as though that we do very good. Like, for instance, the last few years, we've, we've, we've done very good about having meetings with the sales reps every single week, mm-hmm. priming their mind, getting them ready to tackle that week and be able to produce at a high level right. for obviously the company and for themselves. We want to see them evolve. Uh, Kel's talked it, about it several times that the goal is we want millionaires with inside of our organization. And if that happens by default, we'll be taken care of. Right. Right. So in some cases we think about just ourselves, like I want to be making millions of dollars. Well, if you build a company where your employees have the ability to make very good money by default, you're going to do the exact same. Right. Right. And so we've done a good job at focusing on a certain department and developing that department. But as all of our attention and energy goes to that department and cells then increase, Mm -hmm. then it's putting stress on other departments. And so now that our salespeople are, are very, very developed and we have leaders overseeing the sales department, our energy and focus has now shifted over to the fulfillment side. Yeah. And we have felt some struggles and some issues and a little bit of pain in the last you know three or four months yeah. on the fulfillment side due to growth. And during the growth, we had an accountant exit the company, yeah. right? right? And so it, it's like we had enough to service what we had, but then one person drops off. Now all of that fulfillment gets put on another person and now they're taking on way, way more more than they right. should and then they then they have the ability to get burnt out and not be able to service people at the level that you want them to be serviced at absolutely right? i don't know if it's like one of the laws of the universe so don't hold me to this but <laughs> i think everybody will agree like shit never fucking happens at the most convenient time. You know what I mean? It's always at the most inconvenient time. Like oh, yeah. one of our head accountants leaving yeah. as we're experiencing ton of growth, we're already thinking about hiring. We're trying to pre-scale for growth. And then it's like punch in the freaking face, man. Yeah. And here's the thing that people got to understand. Trev and I are both very sales driven people. We are very entrepreneurial. We, we have all these skills in business, but we didn't, we didn't come up being the fulfillment side. No. Right. And so yeah. like building systems and process, is around that although we totally are like caring about our customers and the experience that they have here like that's just not our brain power our brain power is development is growth is like systems processes on that side of the business but not the fulfillment side and so like you know like sometimes i feel like you know maybe things got a little bit neglected there and so although we have all this training and we have like all these badass leaders that we've helped develop like we weren't we weren't trying to neglect fulfillment. We just, we relied on guys that were really good in that department and then they got overwhelmed. Mm. So now, and I think another key thing when I talk about systems and processes is like one thing we're really doing right now is we're going heavy on developing training. Cause if you're going to, if you're going to pre-scale growth and, and your company has just evolved, like, dude, you've got to create new training around those roles, those key roles. So that when you are now, you've got this this army of soldiers just selling for you. Like you've got to be able to now duplicate that position over and over again. And and we've always had the time to just train guys as they came in. Like our key person could train the next key person. And now it's not like that. So we've had to, we're developing as we speak, you know, and recording and logging our training at every single level now with the new key people that we've brought in so that the next few, We can get them up to speed five times faster without bogging down those key people and those key roles. So that's huge for us as well. well. We're going to fucking do some damage this next couple of years. I mean, you got to understand people that, uh, you know, if you're actually looking to hire somebody, that's probably because you're currently feeling some sort of pinch, right? Right. So you're growing and now you're in need of, of more help. So you hire somebody and then you take some of the other help and you put it on that person and say, train this person. Mm-hmm. So now you're down a person to try to train another exactly. person. And so the idea is how much training can you automate rather than taking and, and, and giving to another team member and saying, okay, have them shadow you. Teach them everything that we do here. And it's, that, that's an inefficient way 
to scale, right? Yeah. Because you're always, there's these one, like what happens if you're training somebody for two weeks and they're gone in two months? Then yeah. you have that same person that's training for another two weeks. What happens if that, you know? So then it's just this process where there's an individual that's not really being that productive because their main focus for a couple of weeks is to train somebody, get them, getting them up to speed yeah. rather than actually being a part of the fulfillment team and doing the fulfillment or addressing what needs to be addressed that day. Right. All, all that stuff gets put off to the side for the purpose of training. And now you're paying an individual that's useless to you at this point in training, yep. and you're paying somebody else to train that individual. So you're getting hit multiple times over. What are some things that you could record or document that makes it a little bit easier to onboard somebody and get them producing at whatever aspect it is in your business, right? Yeah. And so as you grow, as you scale, there will be headaches, there will be issues. You're going to feel like the whole world's coming down on you and things are falling apart. And like we said earlier, it's more as though that things are falling together for you because right. when you're having a challenge, a lot of people want to kind of get in their own head yeah. and, and complain and bitch and moan about some of the issues. If anything, if you're experiencing issues, look at it as an opportunity for you to grow. Mm-hmm. Because if you address the issues or your pain points, now your business is stronger. And as you continue to grow, the business will show you where it's weak. Yeah. The bit, the, the bit, it, it will expose itself. You can right. ignore a problem for only so long before it is the problem that's ultimately holding you back, right? So at this point, all of our attention is on the back end on fulfillment. And we just hired three new accountants Two started yesterday and one starting here in like a week or mm -hmm. a week and a half, something like that. And we're not hiring based upon where we are today. We're hiring based upon where we're headed. I love that. Right. And so, and I think more people need to kind of keep growth at the forefront yep. in terms of some of their thoughts. Because if if you are experiencing growth and you have a great staff, but you're you're running your staff down into the ground, you're burning people out. Yeah. And so we've created a system and a process to where an accountant only has to work with a hundred clients. Their job is to make five calls a day, which in four weeks, in one month is a hundred calls. Yeah. So their job is now to make sure that they're contacting the customer, that they oversee at least once a month, answer any of their questions, make sure that they're getting P and L's. How can you break it down and make it so simple to where it's like, Hey, you just stay in this lane. All you need to do is exactly. this, this, and this. And as long as you do those things well, right. and everybody else does this, this, and this well, yeah. everything's going to be well oiled, fine tuned. It's going to be Dude. operating at a high level. And so instead of just, you know, whatever comes in, looking around, seeing who's the least busy, hey, take this, take this, take yeah. this. You know, we, we're going to have a, a little bit different of a process in terms of round robin. We've got three new accountants and they're only about 50% full. And so now we're paying full time for an individual that's only bringing value to us at a scale of 50%. Yep. But that's okay. We're willing to invest in that area. Right. Like wherever you're weak or wherever you're having issues, I would bet it's probably where you've invested the least amount of time, effort, or money into your business. Yeah. And if it's if it's if it's ultimately causing you headaches or stresses or issues, then it's time for you to turn your attention to that thing. It's probably the last thing that you want to address, and that's why you're ultimately having issues with it right now. Right. But why wait until it gets to a pain point that's just somewhat unbearable where you want to quit and give up? I always like how you say it too, man, where, you know, it's like, hey, this is trying to redirect me somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And probably what it's trying to do is redirect you to being honest with yourself too, right? Like, mm -hmm. here's the deal. Like, you're never going to catch me and Trev sitting down and actually building the actual training platform. And then at the same time, you also have all these people that are like, you know, I don't, I don't care how awesome or key player they are, how loyal they are to you, how loyal you are to them. When they feel like they're working to honestly replace themselves, it's a hard thing for them to overcome, like mm. your employees, right? Like well, It's a hard and, thing and for you, you have to overcome to, as an owner. Exactly. So only imagine what it's like at, at an employee level where they feel as though that they're giving up what brings their value. security. Their, yeah, right. that's how they bring value to you as right. the business owner. Exactly. Right? And so it's hard for them to give all that up emotionally, physically, monetarily, everything, right? And you're and, and you're obviously having those talks like, dude, like you're my oh, dude. Yeah. I'm not trying to replace you. I'm yeah. trying to give you more opportunity. Yeah. And we have to go through this, right? But here's the thing, man. Like we we've had to create it 
where it's like, man, okay, we got Andrew over here where he's just like a brainiac, oh, yeah. badass at what he does. He'll sit down and build the training platform. Those guys aren't going to build it either. They're busy in the shit every day. Yeah. So if we can get them to record it all through Zoom recordings and Loom recordings, and then he can take it and build it into the training modules, now all we've got to do is sit back and go, oh, dude, these are the key things that the new employees need to be trained on, right? But like... So the whole point I'm trying to make is like, dude, even if you're like Trev and I, you're not the people that are going to sit down and build the training. You don't have to. Go find the programmer type mind and and get your team to like, hey, man, all I need you to do is this, this, and this so that I can make your life easier, mm -hmm. right? You kind of have to sell them on that idea. And these are the things you guys should be thinking about right now so that when you don't hit those ceilings, you're stuck in chaos, you're trying to wear all the hats still. Honestly, the biggest thing that gets people stuck is they can't pre-scale, and it's because of the shit we're talking about right now, the systems, the processes, the checklist, the training, or it's or money. Cash, yeah. And so you guys have to start thinking about that right now. That's why we did that episode back in, like a few weeks back on basis. Like You guys got to be strategic right now about stacking cash and paying the price of having that cash stacked post-tax dollars so that you have hundreds of thousands of dollars to now invest to go to millions of dollars, mm. you know, to go to that nine-figure level. There's so many entrepreneurs stuck at the seven le seven figure level or multi seven figure level. They want to yeah. go to eight and they can't. Yeah. Why? Because they're starving on cash or they're they're stuck with systems and processes and they can't wrap their mind around stepping back, assembling the team, and getting everyone bought in on doing that exact thing, which is like you know creating the systems and processes, of the checklist, and bringing the right people in to actually build it. Yeah, I mean. What it really comes down to, though, is the podcast that we did not that long ago about stepping back. Yeah. You know, in terms of maybe stepping back with the amount of money that you take from your business. Exactly. You got to be strategic you know, about it. You got to be strategic about it, right? So as of January, me and Kel will probably take a, you know, $300,000 a year hit. Why? Because we're investing it back into the fulfillment side. Mm -hmm. Our fulfillment side, the overhead will probably grow a minimum by... Uh, a half a million to seven hundred thousand dollars, as of right now, uh, going yep. into January. So right. we're investing a lot of time, a lot of money, getting the manpower, so to speak, so that we have the ability to do what we're good at, which is go out and get business. Right? Mm -hmm. Go out there, shake hands, kiss babies, do PR. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah. this is who we are. Yeah. You know, create communities, groups. Um, you know, like I know we've mentioned it a few times. Like, we're gonna launch our own group because we've got so much value uh, brought to our lives by it. Like, we're launching our own. It's not we're not your your coach. Like, we're building a group to where you know we we can give mentorship. We can help solve problems. We can create a community of people. But like. Dude, that's the shit we're passionate about because we've yeah. seen how much it's helped and benefit our businesses. So we want to we want to build our own community. But like that's the shit we're good at, and there's so much business in that too. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're yeah, you're dumb not to <laughs> a triple win. Yeah, well, you're dumb not to uh, focus on where maybe your strengths are. Yeah, you know, exactly. like you got to go through some shit to get there. Yeah, you, you're gonna have to go through some shit. And again, right now, as as, as the year kind of winds down a little bit, and and there's a new year upon us. You're going to want to be strategic about what you're going to do in 2022. Right. Like, be honest with yourself, like Kel said. Maybe write down some of the things that are reoccurring. <coughs> Your issues that, that you have to deal with over and over and over. And if that's your headache and that's your pain point, why are you allowing that? Right? right. Like, whatever resists persists. So you can continue to resist addressing that issue so it, it continues to happen you know, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, whatever it is. And so that's one thing that, that we did is like, okay, well, sales isn't really our big issue. Like we, we've got that side dialed in now, but we need to make sure that we have fulfillment <laughs> to, to back us up and to be able to, to hold the standard that we expect here. And again, guys, no matter what standard that you have, you're going to go through ebb and flows of business to where it's not going to be perfect. The last month or two hasn't been perfect. We've had some people reach out to us. It is what it is. That's just the God's honest truth. It's right. not something that I really like am, am proud of. But at the end of the day, that was our own doing because we, we weren't always keeping one or two extra people in terms of staff right. to make sure that the time was freed up. So our entire goal is to basically buy back time right. from some of the key players that we have internally in fulfillment get those three new accountants on board, make sure that they're handling their book of business, 
up to the standard that we expect here at Easier Accounting so that we can have a couple key high high level players internally to give support to those three accountants mm -hmm. and then also make sure that if somebody reaches out to us we we can say yeah let's get you on a uh, on a call right now with one of our key players over there in fulfillment to maybe ask or uh, answer some of your questions or whatever it is right. but when they're all bogged down doing the day-to-day -day stuff and somebody reaches out hey you know I got 2 years of cleanup that needs to be done you're just like oh fuck I don't, I don't want to even take it on because I don't want to put that on the back of the fulfillment team if they're already struggling, right? right. But you, it has to come back to just ownership. And, and, and I've said it to you a couple of times, like, what's our biggest headache? It's not sales. Like, we, we produce numbers. If anything, it's always been fulfillment. And so we decided, right. let's overpay people in fulfillment. Let's invest a ton of money into that. And let's make sure that the, the fulfillment team is just as strong as the sales team so that they gel well together right. and that we're all operating at a high level, not just focus our attention only on the sales side. Right. That's why we've been going through the process of having leaders, right, mm -hmm. in our company so that we can give a couple leaders to oversee the sales team, yeah. have a couple leaders oversee fulfillment. And that's what we've been working on. And you guys have been hearing it on our podcast over the last you know, three, four, five months that this is right. what we're going to do towards the end of the year is develop these so that we can kind of step back and focus a little bit more on real business right. owners, continue to try to bring value to you guys, because, you know, I, I don't care who you are. If you're an entrepreneur, you struggle, Yeah. whether it's this month or whether it's going to be next month or maybe last month you were struggling, whatever it is, a hundred percent of us that own and operate a business will have the ups and have the downs and kind of go through those lulls. But it's a lot easier to go through some of those downs or some of the lulls when you have a network of individuals that can provide support, that can provide maybe some answers or yeah. different perspectives that, you know, uh, that they have because maybe they have more years uh, in business or maybe they're smarter in a certain area in business than you are. Right. And you can lean on these people. That's one thing that's been a huge help to us is we've leaned on some of the individuals that we know within our network to build out back ends of you know, the real business owners mastermind that we're right. in the process of building out currently. So we lean on these individuals that are inside of our network to help us make us stronger, but you've got to be able to be willing to pay yeah. for that type of help and support. We spend tens of thousands of dollars hiring people that are experts in their field yep. to come in to help us get stronger where we're not the strongest. So the question is, is are you just completely oblivious to your strengths and your weakness in terms of you just got your blinders on, you're just getting hit in the face constantly, you have no idea why, you're probably not a good entrepreneur. Now, if you're getting hit in the face all the time and you know why and you're not doing anything about it, you need to take ownership of that, whether yeah. that's stepping back in terms of pay. Because I would rather make a quarter million dollars a year with zero headaches than make, let's say, a half a million dollars a year getting my face pounded in every single day. Right. It's true. I'd take a quarter million, address the problem. Right. And now I now now, now I can, can go to half now, a million yeah, yeah. or, or Eat a lot easier. No, a lot, well, a lot well, less you, stressful. You, well, <laughs> you could probably go to a million now. You're right. Exactly. Because you now have the support in order to be able to grow at the scale that you want to be able to grow at. But in some cases, again, you're taking a, a big step back in order right. to set yourself up for something greater. And I think more people need to realize that because when you're talking about, you know, 100,000, 200,000, even 50,000, whatever it is, depending on where your income is. But when you're talking about taking that step back, it's a very difficult thing to do it is. because you're just like, you know what, maybe I can just continue to get punched in the, in, in the face for like another year or another two years or whatever it is. What's going to happen is you're going to get to the point where you start resenting your business. Right. All the problems that you have in your life, you're going to say that it's because of your business and maybe it is. Yeah. But guess who's in charge of operating that business? You are. So when it boils down to nothing, you're the only person left. So you are the cause of your issues. Yeah. You are the issues in your business because you're choosing to avoid them. You're choosing not to address them head on. You're choosing not to invest time, money, effort, energy, whatever it is into that thing that's ultimately causing you the headache that, that you're dealing with at this point. Absolutely. So absolutely. You know, let's, here's the thing though, like how many companies, I was thinking of this as you were talking, that feel that same war we've always felt between sales and fulfillment. 
You know what I mean? Like, let's be real, dude. Oh, like, yeah, there's got to like be a lot of other companies. Yeah. I know I've talked about it with other companies yeah. too, where they're like, dude, my sales guys hate fulfillment. My fulfillment hates sales. It's all like these, it's almost like two separate companies, it's but like they the, need each it's other. It's like the Bloods and the Crips. Yeah. But the Bloods wouldn't be the Bloods without the Crips, and the Crips wouldn't be the Bloods without, you know, they need yeah. each other to battle <laughs> each other. You know? you know what I mean? Like, it's true. Like, <laughs> but let's see, the one thing that we did, and, and hopefully this helpful is helpful for people that feel that same thing that we felt all these years, because like, you know, whatever, maybe fulfillment, you know, d- drop the ball on something that killed a deal for a sales guy. Now they're kind of upset. And, and then fulfillment's like, well, screw you. You didn't sell it right. You shouldn't have said it like this. I couldn't do this because you oversold it. Right. And there's this weird battle that goes yeah. on like, Hey, you're, you're, you're making it so I can't eat. And this guy over here's like you making it so i can't eat motherfucker yeah you know and so there's this weird war it goes on all the time and and uh you know we we've always had an awesome culture and uh, but there's always been that little bit of like weird disconnect and so man we took our, our head guys from each department and we forced them to hang out yeah force them to get together yeah. you know like we're we've been their leaders now they're stepping up as leaders but they're working together you can create too many chiefs not enough indians that is a problem too yeah. right but our company's big enough now where we've got the head people couple head people on fulfillment couple head people on the sales side they're now meeting every week now they're planning dinners together they're bringing each other's spouses they're creating relationships and now that little weird war has fizzled down to almost nothing mm. now does it still come up every now and again well yeah it does like it's but it's very minuscule or it's very minor it's not as blown up to be a big issue anymore and so that's one key thing that i want people to keep in mind too is that's something that can really you know cause your company to feel like it's chaotic and it's falling apart as well it's like if you're not leading your team right you're not getting ahead of that that's something you need to consider like man start taking your your main people and really start creating a uh, uh, a value in each other you know like make sure that they see the value in each other make sure that you're like help guiding that because Dude, it, it, it'll cause some ceilings right there as well as when you guys can't be eye to eye or on the same page about, you know, what the mission is yeah. uh, and you guys aren't all bought in on it. Um, guys or gals, you know, like you got to you got to have that uh, center camaraderie. In that, yes. Yeah, you know, you got to yeah, have yeah. that. that you, you, they, they have to be working together as a unit. They do. You know, I they mean, it, it's like a it, it's like a team. <laughs> offense and defense but they're on a completely different page no they, yeah. they they have their team meetings but then they have their little you know offensive meetings and then they have their defense yeah. so yes it's okay for them to meet individually about some of the things that they need to address but right. they have to be meeting together as well right exactly and it's and, okay to even have some conflict and arguments and disagreements and yeah. find out okay well now this is the perfect solution but when they leave that room they're not they're not taking that cancer out to the whole company like oh disagreements and arguments they've having to that as leaders figured out what the path is you know, knuckles, and they go out and execute on, on hey, this is what we need to do to get everybody, uh, you know, following the system that, that aligns. We can't be overselling these departments. And, hey, we can't be blowing up deals by saying this stupid shit over here on fulfillment. Well, I think fulfillment, I mean, <coughs> the, the problem is, is if fulfillment <laughs> is overwhelmed and salespeople keep selling, then they get resentment towards the salespeople. Right. Just like people get resentment towards their business if their business is causing issues, right? But in reality, the business is the thing that ultimately feeds you and your family. In reality, sales is what ultimately feeds fulfillment and feeds their family, right? Yeah. And so you have to keep the proper perspective uh, just as an individual, whether you're an owner, an operator, whether you're an employee, or you know, no matter what the situation is, everybody needs everybody. And I don't think one person is more important than the other. And people need to put their egos aside and come together with one common purpose. And that's growth. Because if something is growing, then there's ultimately more fruit on the tree, so to speak. Right? Absolutely. And so there's more for everybody to eat as long as you're, again, bringing them together and they're working as a unit. As long as there's any sort of, you know, battles going on inside of your business, that's not a business that's, you know, prepared to thrive, right? If you have a cancerous environment, that's not a thriving environment. And so if, if some of your headaches and issues are people's attitudes, then, but yet you don't want to let them go because, well, I need people. Then again, you might be the issue in your business because you're not willing to take that minor setback in order to set yourself up for something greater. Every single time we've ever had issues and it feels like things are falling apart, boom, right after, there's a little spurt, yeah. a little growth yep. that 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 happens, right? Yep. And so you have to keep that perspective when you're going through shit. Like, 
I've got to grow through this, uh, through this process. I have to address where I'm weak. I've got to be honest with myself. I've got to invest the time, the money, the effort, energy, whatever into this area so that it's no longer a headache for me. Right. And if you're not doing that again, you're the issue, you're the problem. So yeah. if things are feeling like they're, they're crumbling down around you, it's probably because uh, a misstep that you took again, figuring out a way to take ownership. We probably should have been, you know, staffed with one or two more people right. six months ago or eight right. months ago or whatever it is. And it is tough to find people you know, in the accounting industry, you know, I know yeah. some people are like, man, in construction, it's hard to find. It's hard shit's to find. competitive, right? I mean, though, fucking right Del now. Taco's paying 20 bucks an hour for a night shift. So Del Taco's feeling the same the pinches or squeezes, so right. to speak, as people in construction that can't find people that want to work hard or right. accountants, you know, or what it doesn't matter the industry or the business. Everybody's kind of feeling the pinch, but we decided, you know, let's just pay people greater than what they can get anywhere else. Let's put uh, let's put them in a situation where they can have good work life balance. Yeah. Let's put them in a situation where they're just happy with what the what they're doing um, to the point to where that overflows onto the client or yeah. onto the customer, right? And it, it, and it, it and it sounds all great in theory, but prior to all that happening, you're gonna go through fucking shit. Yeah, you're gonna go through a lot of shit. That's just the way exactly. it is. Unfortunately. Um, unless you're just some sort of genius with a crystal ball that can foresee growth or issues or problems yeah. or people leaving your, your, your company, there's always, uh, curveballs or unexpected things that can happen because one, you can't control customers Two, you can't control p just humans in general, which are customers and your employees, right? You know, you, you might have a staff of 10 people, three of them might be talking right now about leaving. Yeah. You exactly. Know, keep keep that top of mind. Like when when you're when you're have a bad attitude or a sour attitude, you that might be the day that the the, the straw breaks the camel's back, mm -hmm. and then you get put in a worse situation. Which it's probably a good thing long term, so that you can learn that lesson, maybe right. not to be sour, right. right? Because we have to learn lessons through pain, right? That's yeah. just how humans seem in, to learn in order best. to pivot and shift. You know, you, you've got to learn those lessons. Yeah, and the other thing is we're all. Dude, let's just call, like we're all emotional. Yeah. Like everyone says, well, I don't make emotional decisions in business. Well, we're emotional beings. Yeah. Right. Like it's kind of hard to not let go of somebody you care about. My heart's froze. <laughs> it's kind of hard them. though to not. Kidding. It's kind of hard to raise the prices on your on your on your customers, but yeah. you have to because you're paying your staff more because the inflation has caused so much competitiveness in the market. Well, I'd rather. Right. So I'd, you're like you're dealing with all these emotions involved with all these decisions as you're growing as well, and it's like, dude, in I, order to give you a great experience, I gotta charge more and, and, and I gotta thing. pay more, and you know, like at the end of the day, cheapest isn't the best. That's true. Usually, it's the most expensive it's long term. Right. Yeah, I'd rather pay an extra hundred or two hundred dollars a month and get a, a high level service. Uh, that's something that's not going to create another issue or another problem for yeah. me because I already got enough to deal with on my day to day operations. Yeah. And so when you're when you're outsourcing and you're you're sitting there trying to price gouge or this that the other, right. you, what you need to understand is you're price gouging to the point where you might make a decision that's another detrimental decision to your business because you're being a cheapskate. Yeah. You know, and, and you're, you're trying to cut corners. You're trying to be the cheapest, you know, guy in the world in terms of your fulfillment right. or in terms of the things that sure. you're outsourcing. And so, cause all you're doing is look at your bottom line when that's not the best way to think. You need to think about where you're going, not what your bottom line is today. Mm -hmm. And as long as the decisions that you're making are connecting with where you're wanting to be in one year, two years, five years, 10 years, then you're making the right decision no matter how difficult the decision is or no matter the emotion that's behind the decision exactly. uh, that needs to be made. You know, some people uh, sent us a DM not that long ago, like, hey, is it, like I heard you talk about whatever, a quarter million dollar investment in here and, and then another one in this business. Is that hard to do? I said, well, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course it's hard to do. I mean, obviously it gets easier with time. Now yeah. we just like, don't it's think also, about it as much. And it's we also just hard send to sit on a off. pile of cash wondering what the hell you're going to do with it because you yeah. know it's not making you no money either. Yeah. It's like, damn, I got There's, this tool sitting here. I'm not using it. Yeah, that's all you it is is, is, <laughs> is, is you should be looking at money as a tool. Now, if you're holding all the tools, yeah, then guess what? You're dealing with all the problems. Yep. Give some of the tools up to the people that are ultimately there to help you. Yeah. 
so that you ultimately don't deal with the headache, right? Yeah. So if money's a tool, give the tools out to the people that are in your business that are showing up every single day yeah. so that they're happy, they're well taken care of. And the last thing they're worried about is ultimately money. Yeah. The, the thing they should be worried about is just producing at a high level. Exactly. So that's the type of environment that we want to create where everybody's doing well financially to where the stresses that they have coming into work aren't necessarily financial stresses or how am I going to make my house payment or my car payment or my this payment or whatever it is. Um, and, and we do a great job of trying to make sure that we reward people, but not too fast in the process because that creates entitlement. Yeah. So there's this, this little balance that has to happen. You know, we've had people work with us for eight years, 10 years, you know, whatever. And by the time they hit that point, they're making six figures, right. like very easily. Right. right? And exactly. so all the people that have stuck around through the ups and the downs, the lefts, the rights, some of the, the struggles yeah. that we've that we've had to go through and some of the people that have ultimately said, you know what, I want to throw my name in the hat and help take on some of the struggles that the business is facing yeah. and create solutions to it. Those are the ones that get rewarded. So if you're an employee listening to this, what can you do to serve the entrepreneur that you work for? Right. How many headaches could you take off of their plate so that you're bringing value? That's right. really what it comes down to. And so that's how you should be approaching your day is how can I bring value to the individual that's operating the business? Right. And part of that is one, doing your job at a high level, but also secondly, not just doing only what you're getting paid for, but also doing things that you're not getting paid for so that you can eventually get paid for those things. Right. Right. And Absolutely. so it ultimately does come full circle. If you're working at a $15 an hour pace and you get paid $15 an hour, expect to stay right around that right. mark. Uh, but if you're working like you make 50 bucks an hour at $15 an hour, watch your check's going to show 20 right. pretty quick or then 21, 22, 25. And so it, it's the same concept as, as an entrepreneur or as a business owner, they go into it, they're not getting paid a whole lot, but then they get back payment for all the work that they did in that startup phase uh, and start getting paid really, really well and handsomely for all the struggle, the pain, the stress that they took on. And I believe it's the same for employees as long as you're working for the right company. Yeah. And if you're not working for the right company, you know, take ownership of that and make sure that you go somewhere where you're, you're appreciated because right now there's really no excuse to stay where you're unappreciated because there's so many opportunities out there and everybody's trying to throw money to get good help. And if you're the good help, then there's more opportunity for you than yeah. anybody else. Right you're now. a hot commodity, man. Exactly. That's the thing, man. That's such a great message for this, this whole episode. Like, man, I don't care what, what side of the line you're on. If you're, if you're serving an entrepreneur as, as a key person in the in the organization or want to be a key person in the organization, like you want that career money, you know, you've, you've got to, you've got to step up and take on some of that burden, man. You like show your value sacrifices. in order to have the value. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to create that value in yourself. And so same thing with the entrepreneur too, man. Like you want that, your mission, your company to really affect uh, the people within your organization positively. Um, you want to have that F you money eventually one day. You got to make these sacrifices. You got to take accountability. You got to step back. You got to lead properly. You got to pre-scale mm -hmm. so that this that you don't just create this this chaotic ceiling that where everything's falling apart. Agreed. Right? And so yeah. I think that's a great message. Well, me too. And I think we summed it up, bro. We kind of brought uh, uh, some of our other episodes full circle too. Dude, that was a good one. Yeah. You think we actually planned that out all yeah. week and we didn't? We planned it out. Yeah. You know. And we co-signed for yeah, ourselves. <laughs> like, if you don't think we're telling the truth, go back and listen <laughs> to some of our other shit. And we'll tell you there yeah. exactly what we told you today. Or you can listen to three episodes in one. <laughs> episode 130. Yeah, Bing, exactly. You know. Um, no, we do appreciate you guys. Make sure that, yeah. uh, you know, if you are looking to, you know, take that next level in your business, uh, that's something that we're going to be able to help with. Yeah, I'm, very, too, I'm very, so excited very, about it. Very, very shortly. We've I mean, talked about it a long time. And I'm just going to be real with people, man. Like, we've gotten so much more value out of the higher level groups and things that we've been a part of. Like, that's what we want to create. Like, we yeah. want to create some levels to it as well. Um, but, uh, you know, like. But anytime we pay, we're going to be know, very selective. or $200 a month for something. That's not enough money that's invested where you could throw events right. and bring master and people together. Right. Magical things happen when people come together, especially a group of people that are all with the same mindset of growth and they want to evolve as an individual and as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And if you're surrounded by 30, 50 or 100 of these exact same type of people, it's amazing. They're all your coach. Yeah. They're all the, well, it's just a huge support network. Right. Like, 
you're not a good marketer, cool. Out of one out of the 50 people, they're a great marketer. Right. You know, team up with that individual. Your website's garbage, cool. There's a great website person inside right. of the group. You know, whatever it is that you're yeah, struggling legal, with. money stuff. It like, doesn't, dude, it's everything. It doesn't and matter. You I was just have telling s- that dude in the DMs the other day. He's like, you know, because he wanted a coach. I'm like, bro, we don't coach people. Like, I'm not a coach. Yeah. Okay? Like, you can go hire a coach that thinks he's, like, the greatest at all things. Now, if you need something specific, like... I hired Brad to be my marketing coach, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like I needed to know some of that specific stuff, so I hired him to be a coach. But if you're looking for just a general business coach, you're going to get so much more value by being a part of a mastermind a because group. now you got experts, especially a high-level one. you got experts in all these different fields that you guys are all coming together, you're helping each other, and then you're also networking and doing business and life together. It's well, like it's pretty magical thing. I mean, just in the last year or so, between both of us, we've invested 860000 in new business ventures. Where did mm-hmm. that come from? Yeah. It came from an individual that we met in a group. So not right. only do you have the ability to grow and evolve as an individual inside of a group, your business has the ability to grow and evolve. And the opportunities that are now presented to you are completely different opportunities by uh, individuals at a high level yep. that are the type of people that you want to put money behind. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you don't put money behind somebody that's just a, a, a brand new startup. That's very difficult to do when you don't know that they've already had some failures or successes in their past to where they've had the opportunity to learn, yeah. right? You don't want to be the opportunity where they learn yeah. and, you, and, and they're learning on your dime, so to speak, because right. in most cases we do everything that doesn't work first in our businesses. <laughs> and finally that last thing that we try seems to be the one that works. You know, you can try 10 different marketing strategies. It'll probably be the 10th that, that, <laughs> that works. The first nine, no. You That's know? true. So <laughs> I, get, I guess the message now is yeah. whatever you are going to try, don't do it. Right. What would you try next, 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 yeah. next, next? And then go to the last thought that you have and try that first. <laughs> and then maybe you'll see success on the first go. So true. You know, so, so uh, but no, that that's just how it works. And and ultimately being a part of group kind of speeds things up because yes. all of these people have already been it's through honestly, those failure phases and they've learned what they needed to and they can bring you value very yeah. quickly because they've already gone through those other nine options that don't fail and they already know what the 10th exactly. is. Exactly. And they can plug you into that 10th very quickly yep. rather than you spending 50 or 100 grand learning what doesn't work in order to be able to finally find the thing that does that's the thing biggest thing that holds people back is like the money right they're like oh i'm gonna pay whatever tens of thousands of dollars to be be part of this group but it's like dude like, those are the groups everyone else in there has done yeah. that yeah, those yeah. Are, that vets that's its own vetting process yeah. alone is the yeah. money but then on top of that dude it's just uh i don't know man it's just so dang valuable and it's like the best thing that you can do as a leader to help elevate everyone in your company is make that investment and we have a credit repair company doing four million a year within a year and a half yeah because, because of some of, because some some individuals yeah. that we met in a group. Yeah. Like we were at a point where we needed to shift. We knew we had some ideas, but like boom, we met this one person who was like, Oh, I have a solution to that problem. In fucking Let me Canada. Fly right on out places. and help yeah. you guys do that. And yeah. within months we started seeing results. Yep. Like one month. Yeah. And then two months and then three yeah. months. And then here we are, whatever, twenty four months later doing four million dollars a year with yeah. a very hefty profit margin. Yeah. It's and so none of that would have happened without us investing into a group exactly and so the opportunities that have been presented even outside of our individual and business growth have been huge yeah and so even when we joined the avengers it was like how much oh it's 30 grand and it's like cool right let's do that one why because it's a high ticket and we know if we pay that money guess who we're surrounded by other Uh, individuals that are of a high level of success that can afford that price point exactly Right. And so that's the room that we want to be in, not a room that costs two hundred dollars to be in or even a couple grand to be in, because those individuals aren't quite where they want to be yet. Yes, they're making the right decision to start investing into themselves. But if you're in a room that's full of people that are paying one hundred, two hundred dollars a month or whatever, all of those people are probably at a newer level in business because that's what they can afford. And so the group can't bring a ton of value to the group immediately because they haven't gone through all of the processes of the pain points and gaining the lessons that they needed to, to make their business that much stronger. And so anytime we see something that is expensive, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship groups, that's the ones that we want to join because those are the individuals that are always looking for the next opportunity. They're always growing Mm -hmm. a new business. They're always investing into something and they need more money 
to make that dream exactly. a reality or whatever it is. And so most of us are part of two, three groups yeah. and we're the ones making the biggest impact in the marketplace. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're excited about that. If you can't tell. Yeah, um, we are. Yeah. So anyhow. we're like selling it without trying to sell it, but here's the deal. We are going to be super selective. Well, we sold ourselves. Yeah. We sold ourselves on it and we started doing it and, and look at where we're at now, it's, you know, two and a half, three years later, yeah. you know, with this podcast, with the business, with the type of checks that we're, that, that we cash, you know, Everything has got better since we started investing, but yes, we are not going to just take any anyone you know, that will any, pay the fee. Yeah, you know that, I mean? that's just, there Paying will the be fee an app. Super valuable, and I admire. But we want to have a room that brings value to exactly. you as well, and so we will vet them, and we're not just going to let open the door and let the floodgates, you know, happen. Exactly. Um, and and we will limit it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to have hundreds of spots available because this is not also, until we can handle it. Yeah, this you know is I mean? also new to yeah. us, right? So we're going to have to start developing, you know, individuals on our team to help support, you know, larger groups. So it could only be thirty to forty people initially. Mm -hmm. So where we keep it tight knit, you can grow those relationships instead of showing up in a room with two hundred people and yeah. you feel overwhelmed. It's Dude. always cool to be like a founding member though too. I like the groups where we're like, yeah. That is cool. Or OGs. Yeah. Yeah. It's just fit. I don't know what it is. I don't know, but it feels cool. It does yeah. pay a prize, yeah. too. Like, know. people know, like, oh, dude, you guys have been in a group been for a long time. You've helped yeah. this person, that person, that person, that person. So, obviously, you're already, like, well, you, gain you have a reputation. Yeah, well, you gain authority very quickly exactly. because yeah. you, you obviously know more people than other people because you've been in it for three years or four right. years or whatever it is, right? And so, you have all the contacts. You know, you're the go-to guy. <laughs> so, anyhow... I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people might be feeling as though that their business is falling apart when it's really actually coming together for you. Those, those weak spots or those pain points are opportunities for you to grow. And so, you know, take advantage of them, yeah. you know, keep that perspective on it because you will want to quit and give up if you don't keep the right perspective as you're going through the shit. But as you go through the shit and you, you patch those holes and, and make the tweaks that you need to, your business is about to hit that next growth phase, yep. which is really paying you for the headache that you just barely went through. Just like we talked about an employee doing getting back paid for the headache that they're ultimately taking exactly. on. Right. And so it's the same concept in business. Make sure you keep that perspective. Awesome things will happen. You know, let time take care of the rest. Just start focusing on making sure that you're making the decisions that connect with your goals long-term and everything else will figure itself yep. out, you know, so control what you can, but guys, make sure you're rating, reviewing, uh, you know, liking, commenting, sharing our shit, you know, the, all the, the common stuff that everybody else says at the end of their podcast, that's where I got it. Yeah. And so I'm just copying <laughs> what they do. So it, we would appreciate if you do what they tell you to do. Yeah. And, we regurgitate it. So <laughs> love it. It's a good yeah, episode. Yeah, great episode. Guys, take care. Kick ass. Have a good day. Peace.